Good morning. We are going to start out our worship today with some singing and some worship to God. Let's stand up and grab your bulletins. We're going to be singing the first couple songs on there, starting with, with When Morning Gilds the Sky. Let's stand up and let's worship the Lord together. Here we go. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised, alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair. our prayer this morning that Jesus Christ is praised during our time here. My name is Steve and I'm the worship director and I want to welcome you here to this time of worship. And as I was preparing for today and thinking about us here gathered in the lawn or worshiping from home, I remembered the story of Jacob from the book of Genesis. And one night Jacob was sleeping out in a field, maybe a field like this one, and Jacob experienced the presence of God there. And his words recorded in the book of Genesis, they call us to worship today. He said this. He said, surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place. And that's something that we can say today, whether we're here on the lawn or if we're worshiping inside a church or even if we're worshiping God from our home, we can say with confidence, surely the Lord is in this place. We are in God's holy presence here today. Let's worship him together. What heart could hold the weight of your love and know the heights of your great worth? What eyes could look on your glorious face shining like the sun you are holy 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 god most high and god most worthy you are Jesus, you are. 
and you shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead all eyes will look on your glorious face shining like the Good morning, beloved. Are you staying warm enough? Yes? Barely? <laughs> it is a little bit chillier out here than what we're no normally used to, but uh, we're hanging in there. So uh, I have, uh, this is Brother Don, by the way, if you're watching and, and you're not familiar with our staff, I'm Brother Don, one of the pastors here, and uh, I have the morning announcements. Uh, just two quick announcements. Uh, the first is this. Uh, today, and it's still not too late to join us. Today is our Epic Family Fun Day. Uh, we're going out to Gold Meadow Farms in Richland. Uh, today's price is now $14 uh, if you want to come still, but we would still love to have you come along with us. Uh, we're going to go out there. We're going to get some donuts and some cider, and we, uh, we're going to have passes to all the, the various uh, 
things and, and events out there. And, of course, uh, you can purchase pumpkins and apple. go pick apples if you'd like. So um, we'd love to. Those are extra, by the way. And uh, we'd love for you to come join us. So I know we've got over 60 people signed up going. So a great crowd. So if you'd like to come, we still have room. You can come. The second one is uh, a bit more of a somber but a, a way of celebrating uh, nonetheless, and that is that uh, All Saints Sunday is coming up soon. Uh, November 1st uh, is All Saints Sunday, and we want to be able to honor those um, beloved of our church and your family members that we have lost this past year. And, of course, we'll honor other folks as well, but uh, we especially want to honor folks that we've lost this year. And so uh, we would encourage you, please, to send picture a picture of your beloved that you've lost this year uh, to the church office at connect at pathfinderchurch.com. Connect at pathfinderchurch.com. Bring a picture in, or you can bring a hard copy in, and we'll scan it in either way. But um, we would love to honor your loved one uh, on November 1st. And exactly how we're going to do that, we don't know yet. It may simply be a video that we put out from the church. We just don't know at this point. Uh, but uh, we're going to do something to honor your, your loved ones. So please uh, provide those to the church office as quickly as you can so that we can build, uh, build our presentation. And with that, I think uh, that's all the announcements I have. You can read the rest of the announcements in your bulletin, please. Uh, take time to do that. And uh, without further ado, we're going to invite up our child director extraordinaire to come give us our... Oh, 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 wait, sorry, sorry, you have to wait, Christina. You're not first this time. Uh, Dick Swope has asked uh, for a, a, a moment uh, to uh, share with you all about a day. It's a great day when we can gather together and worship our Lord Jesus Christ, but it's special for another reason, too. It's Pastor Appreciation Day. And we would like to take the opportunity to say thanks to our pastoral team, Brother Don and Re Reverend Ron and Pastor Jake, for all the work and dedication they do on our behalf. What a year it's been. At church council meeting, Brother Don indicated that 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 was one of his favorites. Peter writes, Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, exercising the oversight, not with compulsion, but voluntarily, not honest gain, or not dishonest gain, but willingly. In this difficult time, our pastors have listened to our stories, given comfort, encouragement, and prayed for us, and we thank them. You have worked hard with your staff to keep us connected by way of outdoor services like we have here today, and, inside, and then with video conferences when it was not possible to be out here. You have provided us with some inspirational Bible studies, I only have four pages. <laughs> With phone calls, you have given much support and encouragement to our Pathfinder Children's House and the church staff when the virus hit and there was much concern about our ability to keep the staff. And let me add to that, uh, we had a lot of discussion and a lot of concern about where we were going to do with that, and I think with, uh, with uh, some good discussion, we were able to keep our staff on, on, uh, uh, on staff. These and many other ways have helped us stay connected and serving. You've had some great help, though, as well. We would be, remi be remiss if we did not acknowledge Jackie and Jan and your families for the support they have given to you as our pastors. We thank them. And a big thanks to Jake for the work he's done to help our youth and families to stay connected in a difficult time. Uh, I can't imagine how, it's how it is to stay connected with all the rules and, re and regulations that are in place. But thanks, Jake. Brother Don, you have made some difficult decisions regarding worship. 1 Peter 5.2 says, shepherd the flock and provide oversight. You've done that. Your leadership... This can't get as dry. Dry fingers. Your leadership, your leadership during the pandemic and also as the Methodist Church tries to find a way forward has been great, and we thank you for that. How can we help? Some suggestions. Answer his call for leadership positions with a yes. Get to know the pastor as a person. What does he like? What are special anniversaries, birthday cards, etc.? Uh, I know he likes blue and gold, but green and white is okay too. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Stop the rumor mill. Do not gossip. Extending grace and mercy instead of criticism goes a long way in building a strong faith community. Support our pastor's spiritual and physical health by, one, honoring his day off, which is Friday, and praying for him every day. So Brother Don and Pastors Ron and Jake, we love you. On behalf of the uh, congregation, we appreciate your ministry at Pathfinder. Thank you for accepting God's ministry. And Jake. And now Christina. Good morning. Guess I don't need that. Last week, I introduced the idea of talking about the armor of God. Friends, if you want to come closer to see better, f feel free to do that. I know I have a few kiddos out there somewhere. Here comes Bren. Thanks for coming on up. So we talked about last week the armor of God. We introdu I introduced that idea and that a, a Roman soldier had a full armor. And I'm going to talk today about the first part of that. Um, Sophie, can you like step to that side? This is my daughter, Sophie, if you haven't met her. And she's got a problem. Her pants are way, way too big. Sophie, come on over here so that you're like right by me. I got to be able to reach you. So her pants are way too big. She needs something. But I have a few things that I want to talk about first. So there are some things that we hear in our lives that are lies like, you're not good enough at that sport. God doesn't love you. You're not that smart. Candy doesn't taste that good. Uh, what? Blasphemy. <laughs> Video games aren't that fun. <coughs> Monsters live under your bed. <coughs> How are those pants holding up? Are they staying up for you? No. Not really, huh? No one loves you. You're not that important. So, Sophie, turn this way. If you let go of your pants, what happens? They fall down, right? They're falling down. She's got pants on under I promise. <laughs> She needs something that's going to help her combat, think against all of these lies. These are all lies that we hear, right? Or something like it. We all hear lies in our life. And God tells us in Ephesians that his word is like the Roman soldier belt. God's word is our belt of truth. There we go. So God's word is our belt of truth. It helps hold our pants up even when we have all of these lies coming at us. Can you think about that this week? What is shooting at you that's a lie? That when you put on your belt, I wear a belt almost every day, that God's word combats. Think about that this week, and we'll talk about the next part of the armor next week. Can we give Sophie a round of applause? <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> See, I told you she was extraordinary. Uh, it's time now for our offering. And as you've come uh, well aware, uh, we, we don't do the offering like we normally do inside the building, um, but we still very much appreciate your giving towards the church. 
and um, there are many different ways to do that. They're in your bulletin, but you can drop off your offering at the, at the little plate over there. You can swing it by the church anytime during the week while we're open, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 3. Or you can use one of the many ways that we can do it online as well, and you can go to our website and look at that, or you can, you can text it in. So we just wanted you to be aware of all those ways of, of caring for your church and the ministries of our church. And so I'd ask you now if you would uh, pray with me, because we're going to give thanks for the offering that's already come, and thanks for the offering that is, that is on its way. Would you uh, bow your heads and pray with me? All things come from you, O God, and with praise and thanksgiving we return to you what is yours. You created all that is, and with love formed us in, uh, in your image. When our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, that we might have abundant and eternal life. All that we are and all that we have is a trust from you. And so in gratitude for all that you have done, we offer ourselves and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and all of God's people said, Amen and Amen. The last few weeks, we've been looking at a verse, Psalm 122, verses 1 and 2. It's in your bulletin. This is the memory verse that connects with our sermon series. Let's say these words together. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Let's sing it. I was glad when they said to let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are, standing inside your gates, O Jerusalem. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And now here we are, standing inside your gates. All right, can we clap it up for our worship team one more time, please? Thank you guys for, for leading us into the presence of God this morning through song. Um, I'm going to leave my hat on because it's kind of cold. I'm sorry. I don't have hair to, like, insulate my, my noggin like you guys do, so I'm going to leave it on. Um, but I'm just so incredibly thankful that we can meet face-to-face -face again after we had our week hiatus uh, due to the nasty weather that we had this past Sunday. It's so good to see your faces and, and to not be like Ron, who was so unfortunate to just have to like talk to the four of us and, and talk to a camera. So I'm really excited to be able to share face to face what I think God has for us this morning. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time to, to join us, to take time out of your busy schedules, whether that's here in person or if you're joining us online. Thank you for doing that and, and for encountering the presence of God with us this morning. Um, if you don't know who I am or maybe you haven't like seen the, the bottom half of my face in the past six months, uh, my name is Jake, and I'm the Associate Pastor of Youth and Family Discipleship here at Pathfinder Church. Um, and I'm really excited to, to share what I think God has for us this morning. Um, we are now in the fifth and final week of our Welcome Home series. And over the course of the past weeks, we've learned from Brother Don that we don't need a building to be in the presence of God because God's presence is where the people who love him are gathered together. And we've learned from Christina that the Spirit of God lives in, as she puts it, all y'all and dwells within us because we are the temples of God. Sorry, Christine, I, I had to. <laughs> and we've learned from Pastor Ron that we need to remain faithful to God, to finish the race that he has set before us, and in doing that, we receive the crown of righteousness that's awaiting us. We've seen our, our focus narrow in this kind of like funnel effect, 
moving from a, a big central idea of how we as a community of believers gathered together are the temple of God, narrowing to how we as individuals are also vessels in which the Spirit of God resides and lives. And we're going to continue that trend of narrowing our focus today, because today we are, quote unquote, putting the finishing touches on the house of God. Today we're looking at sanctification, and not only what that means for our relationship with God, but also with our relationship with other people. So before we jump into what I've prepared for us today, um, would you pray with me? Jesus, you are so wonderful, and you are so awesome. Jesus, you are our King, and you are our Lord. And we just want to acknowledge your presence here with us today. Please, Holy Spirit, just, just dwell among us, move within us, fill every nook and cranny of our hearts and our souls to encounter you and to leave this place changed. Help us to be transformed for the sake of the world, because we love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, so I've got kind of a weird question to kick off our time together today. And that question is, how do you smell? I told you it was a weird one. But I promise by the end of our time today, hopefully it won't seem so strange and, and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. But like I mentioned a few moments ago, we're going to be talking about sanctification. And sanctification is really just a big, intimidating, fancy spiritual word that means the process of being made holy. That Jesus has freed us from the power of sin and through a relationship with him, we become more and more like him. Now before we address the weird how do you smell question, we first have to talk about the difference that exists within scripture between being seen as holy and being made holy. When we put our trust in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we are seen as holy before God. And this has nothing to do with, with who we are or what we've done in the past, what we're currently doing in the present moment, or what we will do in the future, but it has everything to do with the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that saves the people of the world from all of its sins and all of its impurities and pays for the debts of every human being throughout history. When we say that, that Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my King, God no longer sees the mistakes that we've made. Scripture tells us that God even separates us from our sins as far as the East is from the West. So God no longer sees our sins, but he sees the perfect, redeeming work of his son, Jesus. A kind of funny visual that, that comes to my mind when I think about this idea, um, like most things, reminds me of the cartoons that I watched when I was a young child, um, particularly Looney Tunes and the show called Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Um, when the characters on those shows were trying to be like a little mischievous and like sneak around and, and, and try to pull one over on people, they would often sneak and hide behind really skinny objects, like a really tiny tree or like a light pole that they clearly like could not fit behind and, and not be seen. But somehow they would defy the laws of biology and of physics and hide behind these things and not be seen by anyone that was looking for them. And how God sees us is a lot like that, except that, that Jesus is the light pole that we're standing behind. And rather than, than seeing us, you, all you see is the light pole. You see Jesus and how perfect and holy it is. And I say that because when we put our faith in Jesus, we're seen as holy beings before God, just as Jesus is seen. But that's being seen as holy. And it's different than being made holy or being sanctified. And we're going to spend the rest of our time together talking about this aspect, about the process of being made holy, being carefully crafted and artfully formed into the image of Jesus little by little for the sake of the people around us. The first passage that we're going to be looking at today is found in 1 Corinthians 3, um, verses 10 through 15. So if you brought your Bibles or you have a Bible app on your phone, I would encourage you to open those up. Um, it's 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 through 15. If you do not have one of those, that's totally fine because we came prepared and we put it in the bulletin for you. And it's on page 5 in there. So I'll give you a few moments to get to that and then we are going to read it together. So clear your throats and let's get ready to read. All right, everyone ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. Cool, five of you are ready. Awesome. All right, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 10 through 15, it says, Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful, for no one can lay any foundation 
other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. All right, thank you for reading that with me. You guys sound great. Um, In this passage, Paul alludes to what we just talked about, that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is the foundation of our faith and of our holiness. But Paul builds on that concept. He writes that everything added to the perfect foundation of Jesus Christ in our lives will be tested and refined by God, like a carpenter who carefully measures and cuts pieces of wood to be precisely what he needs them to be. And even though God sees you as holy through Jesus, it's your character that has to go through the process of being made holy. As we live in relationship with God and truly encounter the love of Jesus in our everyday lives, we start to be refined by his love. And as we're refined, our character is revealed. Like the fire reveals the structure and the substance of the building materials that Paul wrote about in our passage from chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians. The lingering non-Christ-like parts of our old nature, our character from before we ever encountered the transforming love of God, are refined and disposed of through a relationship with him. Because God's love not only reveals our character and exposes the ungodly aspects of who we are. I'm going to turn like this so the wind doesn't get the mic. Um, Because God's love not only reveals our character and exposes the ungodly aspects of who we are, God's love also offers opportunities for our character to expand and to grow in him. God's love gives us the chance to partner with him and actively live out our holiness to the world around us. We're called to live lives that are defined by the love of God, just as Jesus did, and offer our entire selves, every aspect of who we are and every aspect of our beings as living sacrifices that are a sweet and pleasing aroma to God. The second passage that we're going to read today is from Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. So if you put your Bibles away or you close the the Bible app on your phone, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to pull it out again. I know it's really inconvenient and I should have warned you about it, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, It's also on page 5 of your bulletin. So go ahead and pull that out and we'll read it together. All right, Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2 says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. All right, thank you. So in light of that and what we now know about the process of being made holy, I'll ask again, how do you smell? When you think about your life recently, would you consider it to be a pleasing aroma to God? What scent does your character give off to the people around you? Would you say that you smell more of compromise or do you smell more of conviction? Do you smell of flakiness or do you smell more of faithfulness? Do you smell more of selfishness or do you smell of selflessness? Do you smell of bitterness or do you smell of forgiveness? Do you smell more of scornful hurt and pain or do you smell of the sacrificial love of Jesus? Often we're so easily enamored with charisma that we become slow to cultivate our own character in our lives. So how are you cultivating your character to more and more resemble the love of Jesus to the people around you? Reflecting the character of Jesus or being made holy has nothing to do with your own efforts or what you can ever hope to achieve in your life. It's not something that you can get if you just work hard enough and do and say all the right churchy things. It's not something that can be earned at all. But that doesn't mean that you can just kind of sit back and and kick your feet up and, and not really do anything. No, there's effort and activity involved in the process of being made holy. 
Just like you wouldn't expect a relationship with a significant other, a friend, or, or one of your children to be positive, productive, and life-giving if you didn't attempt to put forth any effort in connecting with them, your relationship with God is the same way. By not spending time with God and not making any effort to have God as a priority in your time each day, you're missing out on an awesome opportunity to know him more fully and to have a deeper, richer relationship with him. Because relationships, whether they're with people or with Jesus, demand time and effort if those relationships are going to be fruitful and healthy. Being made holy and cultivating the character of Jesus in your life is something that can only be done by putting your trust in his saving grace and living in a relationship with him. That's the only way. Now, I know that's kind of a, a cliche and a vague statement, so I want to give you some concrete and practical examples of what that can look like in your life. Now, the Bible describes three virtues that lead people closer to God, and those are faith, hope, and love. And the more that you pursue an intimate relationship with Jesus and a closeness with God, the more that these virtues will manifest themselves in your life, which will lead you to having a stronger, Christ-centered character. Now, here's some examples of how you can live this out. Example number one, choose to live as God's beloved. Now, you might be asking, what does that mean? Well, you're in luck. I prepared for this, and I have an answer for you. God's love for you is so unconditional, and you don't have to do anything to earn it. All you have to do is just receive his love. Focus on being a person that is loved by God, who created you and says that you have infinite worth, worth and allow that love to inspire and transform how you respond and act in your daily life. If you need a reminder of how to do this, um, do something like writing verses that convey this truth on sticky notes and put them up on your bathroom mirror or, or wherever you'll see them several times throughout your day. Another example is to receive other people through compassionate hospitality. Focus on listening to people well and creating an atmosphere of safety and mutual respect in your relationships. Be intentional about listening without judging or making assumptions. Listen for understanding rather than to simply figure out your answer and debate a topic. Reach out to people who are different from you and those that are marginalized within our community, whether that's economically, generationally, or racially. Seek to simply be with others more than you try to do something for them. If you have a neighbor that thinks about something differently than you do, share whatever hot beverage that you prefer with them and seek to listen and understand without jumping to judgment. Another example is to forgive others as you have been forgiven by God and to learn to love those that are unlovable. Let your gratitude for how God has forgiven you for your sins inspire you to obey his command to forgive the people who do wrong by you. Remember that every person is made in the image of God. And here's the kicker. You have to treat them like it. You have to treat them like they're made in the image of God. Maybe there's someone that, that God has brought to your mind while I'm saying this that you know that you need to extend forgiveness to. I would urge you to spend some time in prayer this week asking God to help begin that process of forgiveness within you. Another example is to follow Jesus rather than following your own desires. Jesus invites you to follow him on a journey of faith where he leads you to leave your known experiences, securities, and expectations of what your life might be like behind as he guides you. Our own desires are so often so self-centered, while the desires of Jesus are tuned in to the kingdom of God. Maybe it's your desire and your preference to be worshiping God inside the building that's right over my left shoulder, rather than being out here or watching online but I want to challenge and encourage you to take a different approach and have the mindset of where can I see and encounter Jesus from right where I am, despite my level of comfort and despite my preferences. Another example is to live with integrity and sustain a life of commitment. Aim to live with integrity between your beliefs and your practices so that your faith is fully reflected in all that you say and all that you do. Ask God to show you where he's inviting you to participate in his ongoing redemptive work in the world and go join him there. Respond with obedience to what you read in the Bible, seeking God's guidance through his word and putting your faith into action when you sense God leading you to do something. 
if God's nudging you to extend a helping hand to someone that needs it, be courageous and jump at that opportunity. Don't miss out on the chance to be the love of Jesus to someone just because you're nervous. Oh, that scared me a lot. <laughs> Sorry. Don't miss out on the chance to be the love of Jesus to someone just because you're nervous or it makes you uncomfortable. Final example is this. Pay attention to what God is doing in your life. Build regular breaks into your busy schedule of daily responsibilities so you won't miss out on what God is currently doing in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit for the ability to break free from whatever is distracting you from God and to give you the wisdom to discern what matters most each day. That could look like using 15 minutes of your lunch break to spend time with God rather than just mindlessly scrolling through the, the several apps on your phone that you do. Or maybe praying for your family, your friends, or your kids while you brush your teeth in the morning. But whatever it is, be consistent in putting whatever it is that you're doing down and turning your attention to Jesus each day. So as we close our time out together today, I'll ask again, how do you smell? When you're around your family, your friends, the people that you work with, or just the people that you're walking by on the street, do you give off an aroma that's pleasing to God? As followers of Jesus, we must carry the scent of conviction, of faithfulness, of selflessness, of forgiveness, and of sacrificial love. Because in all circumstances, a child of God who is in the process of being made holy can and must be a living witness to the power and love of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Jesus, you are so wonderful. I'm so incredibly thankful that we have the opportunity to gather together, whether that's in person or online, and be met by your love and your power. Jesus, continue to transform our hearts to better serve the people around us, to better love you, to better love ourselves. Jesus, help us to see ourselves as you see us, to see others as you see them, and for love to just radiate from us so that this world can begin to look more and more like your kingdom, Jesus. Thank you for being with us today. Help us to leave this place transformed and changed by your love as we seek to live in a relationship with you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Pastor Jake, thank you for breaking the bread of life for us. It has come time in our service now to share in Holy Communion. So if you would, please take out your elements if you have them. If you do not have them, raise your hand and let folks know. Sophie's going to come around and uh, pass out any that to someone who might need them. Anyone need their elements? Everyone's good. All hearts are good. For those of you who are at home watching, get yourself a piece of bread and, and maybe a little grape juice or another kind of juice that you have there at the house. We are United Methodists in this church, folks, and because of that, we um, believe in and adhere to an open communion table. And what that means is that everyone is welcome. You don't have to be a member of the United Methodist Church. You don't have to be a member of this particular church. You can join us because Christ is the one who invites, not our church. And so everyone is welcome to join us in Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. So I'm going to... Confess for us. If you know the words, you are welcome to join in as well. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen.
And again, I want you to know that when we pray that prayer, that doesn't mean we're scoundrels or we're terrible people or we're always doing those things, but it does mean that we do do them. And we sometimes forget. And we sometimes do not treat people well. And so we have to ask God for forgiveness when we come to his holy table. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen and amen. So take the top plastic piece off and dig out your wafer piece of bread. the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given for you. Take and eat, and do this in remembrance of him. The cup of salvation, the blood of the Lamb, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of him. We do this as often as we can in remembrance of Christ Jesus and what he did for us and how he loved us so much that he gave himself up for us. And so we remember him in this way, but we also commune with him in this way. We believe that Christ is here present with us as we partake of the elements of communion. And we are very grateful and thankful for what Christ has done for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Pastor Ron's going to come pray for us. It's my privilege to uh, be with you and lead us before... uh, the Lord in this time of prayer. Would you join with me? The sound of the seasons are around us, O God, as the wind goes through the leaves that are turning colors and falling in preparation for a season where they will rest. We give you great our gratitude for allowing us life on this day. We're thankful for uh, the ability to have all of our senses picking up everything from the fragrance of of what is around us to the touch of, uh, of knowing that we are alive. Thank you, God, for the blessings of life. We're mindful this day, O Lord, of our need to come before you with an appetite for spiritual food. And I give you thanks for my brother Jake who has helped put before us a reminder of the fullness of your table and that even in the taking of this sacrament we have a sense and a knowledge that indeed, O God, you provide. We have tasted and we know that you are good. So thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for life abundant. Thank you for your spirit, for the power and the love that you place within us. Hear our prayer, O God. We're mindful this day that around us are people that need us to partner together in lifting them up to you. I'm mindful this morning 
of a couple of my dear friends who are not here this morning. I'm thinking, oh God, of Jake Alzinga, that God, you would bless him as he's still in the hospital. I'm mindful this morning of Donna Menchinger and Jim by her side as she struggles to find health. Oh God, each of us have a list of those people that you've put in our life. And there are names that um, ring with the heart of love that we have for them. Some of those names are so deeply personal to us. And others are people that we're aware of. So together, oh God, as a part of your holy family across this world, we cry, cry out in behalf of others. Lord, hear our prayer. So we leave this Sunday service. We go out into the life that you've given to us with all the senses alive, praying, oh God, that people perceive the beauty of Jesus in who we are. We ask these things even as we pray how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. On a personal note, most Sundays that we have communion, we're grateful for uh, Jim Harrington for preparing the elements. I'm very curious as to how Jim prepared the elements for us this morning, getting all of that in this little tiny package. Well done, Jim. We appreciate all that you do for our church. All right. I think one more thing from Steve. How are you doing? You're warm yet? Let's stand up, shall we? I hope my fingers are nimble enough to play. We've got one more song that we're going to sing as worship to God. We're going to close our service today by worshiping the Lord and turning our hearts to him. Let's sing Overcome. Is it Overcome or Overcame? The last song on your program. Let's sing it together. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. Never sinned, but suffered as if he did. All the glory, every victory is yours. All the glory, every.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. Receive this blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.